Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie. For those who don't know me, reviewing Love is Blind season three after the altar, which is technically a special, but technically the continuation of the season after the reunion child. It never makes sense to me, but here we are anyways. Before I get into it, please make sure to like the video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. The way this is gonna work is I'm gonna post probably today, Sunday and Monday. Or maybe, oof, because Love Island, it's a lot. It's a lot, but it's going to be done before, like, the mid of next week. You know, I want to give people some time to catch up, and then we could talk about it together. Okay? Okay. So, we start to see, well, first, they hit us with an opener of SK and Raven coming together, and we all know how that ended up, so... <laughs> Anyways, the first couple who we really dive into is Alexa and Brennan. They are meeting up with their families at Alexa's house and they're talking about how they're not avoiding pregnancy. Make sure like yeah. you're really stable before you start having children because it's stressful. I mean, even if you have a great relationship, it's very stressful to have kids. This has been by like, the grace of God. Pull and pray. <laughs> pull and pray, baby, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. We do have a lot of sex. I like. <laughs> I don't know if it was just me, but I felt like throughout this special, there was such an emphasis on how good Brennan is in bed to Alexa and how she's so satisfied and how he takes criticism well and he's just such a great lover. And I'm just like, okay, girl. Okay, we get it. Like, I'm sure, I'm sure she's trying to rectify the comments that she made at the pool party during the season, but I'm just like, we, you stayed in it for a year. I'm pretty sure he's gotten better over time. And if he hasn't, who Chile? <laughs> that would be an issue. Um, I do appreciate that they're showing these family gatherings and stuff because I feel like last season with the whole Jared and Ayana thing, it was very skeptical to me that they weren't doing many family gatherings, if any, at all. And so for the relationship not to work out, I'm like, that kind of makes sense because they weren't really living like a married couple. They didn't really mend their families together. Not every family does come together, but I didn't really understand why the families weren't coming together. So it's nice to see them coming together. Alexa's father says a comment saying that he knew Alexa would be well suited with a cowboy or a countryman, something like that. Was this not the same guy who basically was saying she is on a different caliber than him and basically he wasn't worthy? Am I recalling that wrong? Because I feel like that was Alexa's father and now he's like, oh, I always knew you were well suited. It's the lies for me. Matt and Colleen are talking about buying a home. Are they talking about buying a home or just moving in? Whatever, they're talking about cohabitating because currently, they still don't. You don't live in like the best neighborhood. I don't. A guy's body was in the dumpster. Sorry, girl, let's keep it on. <laughs> Jumping straight in to move in with each other, who knows how that would have worked. You know, yeah. for us to make this really work the way we want to, this is how we have to do it. No, yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't want to put like traditional standards on however people want to live their marriage. If you feel like living apart works for you, then find that works for you. However, when they talk about living apart, they make it clear that it's not because they don't want to, but because they feel like being in the same place will tear them apart. If you ask me, that's all the more reason to not be together. You think living together will ruin your relation? Then don't, then don't be together. I would hope in a marriage, the one person I'd want to spend my time with day in and day out is the person I'm married to and not have a fear that no, us living together will definitely ruin their relationship. Is this a marriage we really want to fight for? For real? Y'all not married for real, for real. y'all dating. SK and Raven arrive at their apartment okay and i say apartment because i don't believe this storyline whatsoever even if there wasn't the scandals of what was going on something about this is very off home hey kiddos we're home <laughs> that's my man that's my boyfriend my man my man my man 
On top of your internship, yeah. your full-time job, and being in school, I've never once felt like, oh, he didn't call me. <laughs> like, I've never felt like that. Big side eye. Because Raven is like, I don't even understand how you are able to nurture this relationship with all you have going on. Honey, we don't understand it either. Something in the milk ain't clean. Something is not right. This man is a full-time student with a job and an internship in a long distance relationship and has the ability, the financial means to go half on an apartment? Come on now. Nancy and Bartiz go out for drinks and they share that they actually hang out a lot more often than people would think. I've seen Nancy frequently over the past year. Nancy's different than any other ex. I've never been engaged before. For me, it was their feelings for you are much more hateful because they didn't fall in love with you. Your energy, like your level of positivity, like I like to be around you, like you are a good person. Personally, I'm not surprised that Nancy is still keeping the door open at this point in the timeline with Bartise because she's delusional. Sorry. I feel like she's been delusional the entire time throughout the process. Like, of course, you cannot help who you are attracted to, right? We all agree. But the way in which Bartise went about it and how he spoke to Nancy regarding the situation, I would never let somebody talk to me that way. And then after the fact, to still keep the lines of communication open after you blatantly disrespected me time and time again in a quote unquote loving relationship, I'm gonna do what bestie with you? You're crazy. You are cr Absolutely not. I don't know why these two thought a friendship would be good for them. It's obviously beneficial for one person and not the other, and Nancy's the one not benefiting. The women meet up at some kind of place. I don't know if they were there for drinks or just eating, whatever, child, you know it's just for the show. And Zenob shares that she is in therapy. Losing my dad at, at 13, it just felt like I've, I've never had the male perspective on something. Be like, hey, it's you. You're actually seeing things crazy. I stand by my decision, and I stand by everything I said, but, it was a lot to unpack afterwards. I too stand by your decision not to marry him, but more so because of her than of him. I still believe even now that the season has wrapped and the reunion has been aired and people have said their piece and whatnot, I still believe that Cole was villainized more than he needed to be considering how Zenob showed up in that situation as well. I believe there was a lot of insecurities being projected onto Cole and that's not to absolve Cole of his wrongdoing, but this constant blame game to make it seem like he was the perpetrator, he was the villain, he was the bad guy. I'm just like, ah, did we watch the same show? I don't know, but she's unpacking that in therapy. Colleen shares that six months into their relationship, into the marriage, they were still bickering and fighting. And honestly, they had a sit down to say, should we stay together or should we go apart? And they decided that fighting for the relationship and always being drawn back to each other was enough to keep it going. It's sounding like struggle love to me. Just because you're constantly drawn to each other does not mean you should be to get, trust me I know, does not mean you should be together. So I don't know what she's on about, but anyways, um, the same situation is kind of going on with Nancy and the women encourage Nancy to cut things off point blank with Bartise because just because you're drawn to somebody doesn't mean they need to be in your life. We never hooked up okay. after. Really? Um, it was like, one I know. night, things got a little intimate and the very next meeting, like I was sitting on his lap. I don't have boundaries because it was someone yeah. that I did love. Do as I do, it's no contacts ideal for me. Yes. <laughs> I'm so glad that she admitted to not having healthy boundaries because this man constantly violated this woman and she just let it happen. I'm sure maybe she gave him, you know, a tongue lashing behind cameras or something like that. Like maybe, potentially, I don't know. But just constantly seeing her being like knocked off, like just, just her self-esteem being chipped at, chipped at, chipped at, and still going back to Bartiz, I was just like, yeah, the healthy boundaries, non-existent. So I'm glad she has acknowledged that within herself. Um, there's obviously still a love that she has for Bartiz at this junction. So 
she doesn't want to completely like cut things off, but babe, because the lines can be blurred, that's all the more reason to cut it. Cole is out with his friend and his girlfriend. Tell me this friend does not look like Spider-Man. This man is Spider-Man. But anyways, he's talking about um, Zeneb blindsiding him at the altar. You've always wanted someone that's just kind. Yes. And then you realize the person's not very kind at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. I genuinely thought she was going to say yes at the wedding. And if she wasn't going to say yes, we had decided that we were going to keep dating. I don't regret the relationship at all. I just regret the pain that was caused by it. I think the same issues that she has with Cole could be put on her as well. She didn't like the way that he would say things to her and and like sometimes he was cruel and his verbiage and I think the same for her honestly. And the fact that she kept all of those pent up frustrations to the altar to then spew it to him in front of friends and family and just, I was just, there's something very vindictive about what she did at the altar. I know a lot of women are like, oh my gosh, women empowerment. That was so brave of her. Oh my gosh, I'm so proud of her. Not me. I don't think that was brave. I actually think that was cowardly. I think that was rude. I think that was mean. And I, I, I don't side with Cole, but I agree with his sentiments that, yo, I feel completely bamboozled because homegirl was saying, you know, maybe we could pursue something if it doesn't work at the altar, but then she had this plan orchestrated and then it's going to say, I didn't know until I reached the altar. Zena, Girl, bye. The guys meet up for drinks and food, which, you know, the men and drinks, typically it doesn't, it doesn't go well, but it was kind of cordial because Cole wasn't in the room. Anybody can be friends with whoever they want. I just don't want to be around them. Okay. SK, how y'all been? Going back and forth. It's very expensive, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. That, yeah. You know, because like, got a place together. Oh, nice. <laughs> so we moved in nice. together. I really enjoy just naturally falling in love again. I yeah. really enjoy that. That's good, man. SK shares how him and Raven, he and Raven, have such a natural relationship and everything is just so easy going and it's just a perfect fit. And I'm just like, of course it is. Because you're agreeable. <laughs> I don't know what it is about Raven that has this man being a yes man, but everything is just my pleasure, my pleasure, as you wish. Sure, my queen. Like everything is just hunky dory. That's why I'm still shocked that things didn't go the way I thought it was gonna go at the altar because he was just a yes man throughout the entire engagement. So I don't believe everything is as great as he is saying, and we all know why now, but I'm just like, yeah. I don't trust agreeable men. I'm sorry, Brennan is even on that list. He was very agreeable during the season and I'm just like, there's no way somebody is that on par with everything you say, everything, no pushback ever, sketchy. Matt is sharing at the table that the reason they are not living together, he is very adamant about this. The reason they're not living together is because it is fiscally irresponsible. If we, if we wanted to immediately move in with each other, I would have to break my lease, spend $5,000 just to break the lease, just to move in. I don't want to get that narrative out there. It's not that we don't want to live together. Well, you're not. We're not yet. I believe for us, this is the best way to do it for the long term. This is a commitment that I've made for a lifetime. Sir. <laughs> Sir, have y'all not been together for over a year now? You're telling me your lease has not, has not ended in this time? And you think breaking your lease, which allegedly is going to cost $5,000, I don't know where they do that at, but sure, that's what he said. Allegedly, it's going to cost $5,000. Is it, it, It's better to just have separate apartments where they are both paying separately, I assume, instead of breaking a lease, coming to, oh, maybe he means both their leases separately, breaking that would accumulate to $5,000, whatever. He still thinks living apart is better financially for them than coming together and only paying for one residence. If y'all don't stop lying in our faces, <laughs> y'all don't want to be together. And maybe you do, but y'all have realized, mm, maybe we shouldn't be together, but we have just, we've gone too far. SK's brother AB is in town and I'm so sorry, guys. I, I, I just, I have to do my little African rant. SK's name is not even that hard to say. 
A, B, I don't know what your name is, but I'm sure it's not that hard to say either. As an African, it really, 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 really frustrates me when African people want to Americanize their names for palatability. And like, I understand some African names be hard. Even for us other Africans, we look at that y'all name like, bruh, are you serious? I get that. But there's, I don't know. I just, I don't like it. I don't like it. You know, like even a nickname, but a whole abbreviate, A, B. One Nigerian is called A, B. Moving on. SK is talking to AB and he's saying he wants to propose. <laughs> Honestly, I'm be honest. When I was coming down, I was a little skeptical about what to expect. Oh, yeah? Long distance relationship. It's not for everybody. Bro, honestly, Grayson looks like she's amazing. I know I struck gold. I'm actually planning on proposing to her again, you know? She's someone that I feel like I don't have to like second guess, and that's something I don't want to lose. Okay, bro. <laughs> oh my God. We got. Ah! Chinike. <laughs> yeah! You want to do what? You want to propose to this girl? Why? Not even because Raven is the problem, but because you are. <laughs> I just, I just, I just don't. Un and here you got AB talking about, yeah, I was skeptical in the beginning, but now I'm fully invested. Invested in the farce. Because there's no way you did not know that your brother was moving mad. Hey, your whole family is crazy. Your whole family is crazy. Anyways, that is it for this episode. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Y'all let me know how you thought about this episode because it just felt like cap, 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 cap to me. And again, like, comment, share, and subscribe, like I said, and I'll see you guys in the next one.